up you guys the curious owl here and today i have my review for blood promise by rochelle mead so this is part of my vampire academy reread slash finish series so if you're watching this video and have not read any of the other books in the vampire academy series up to this point i would recommend you go read those and or watch the reviews i have for them these are going to contain some spoilery elements because this is the fourth book now in the series and so what happens in this book place a lot on the things that have been going on up to this point in the series. To avoid spoilers, I would recommend not watching this video if you have not read this book or at the very least the other three books in the series. With that being said, let's get into the plot of what exactly Blood Promise is about. So on the heels of unfortunately losing Dimitri, Rose decides to completely leave the St. Vladimir Academy and go off to Siberia to find him in order to kill him. This is because when they had first met and started getting really acquainted with each other, they both had discussed the idea that if either of them were to turn Strigoi, they would hope that the other would kill them because being a Strigoi, it might as well just be death. And being a Strigoi then indicates too that there is a level of evil within the other person and so they don't want necessarily to continue living if that is how they're going to end up living in a sense because technically Strigoi are not alive but not dead either. So in this we're following Rose as she leaves St. Vladimir's leaving Lissa her best friend and bondmate behind in search of the man she loves in order to kill him. There's a lot of things that kind of come up within this about Rose's kind of morality and her indecision about what exactly to do because there's a lot of things at stake here. For one, it's, you know, closing an entire part of her heart that she really grew to love and appreciate. Dimitri was somebody who she revered not only as her guardian trainer, but as somebody she truly loved. And you saw that over the course of the first three books. So obviously it is incredibly heartbreaking to hear her thoughts about the fact that she's having to shove all those feelings away in order to focus on her mission, which is to find him. And unfortunately that does then require her to act without really thinking, which can be incredibly frustrating for a lot of readers. And so I understand why there is a lot of frustration going into this novel because you're literally watching her make these really dumb decisions because she's not thinking as clearly as she should. But given the context of the situation, I think that Rose handles what happens to her pretty well because understanding where she's come from at this point with not only now losing Dimitri but having lost her best friend Mason who was kind of a boyfriend of hers in some capacity and having to deal with all the pressure of protecting her best friend it's very very clear to me why she ended up kind of breaking in the way she did and why she's acting more on impulse as opposed to truly thinking because I think at this point the mental health of Rose is detrimental it is like absolutely rock bottom. There is nowhere to go from here. And it is very easy to, I think, assume that she's just being childish when in reality, she is acting on pure impulse because she doesn't know what else to do. She doesn't know what else to really think of because the only way she thinks that she's going to move on is by acting on impulse by going to kill Dimitri and leaving the academy. At the very end of the last book, which is Shadow Kiss, we learn that Rose turns 18. So she is now considered an adult. And while she only had about a couple months left of her schooling before she would go through her trials to become a guardian and be you know, appointed with Lissa as her guardian, a lot of that is thrown out the window in the course of her going off to find Dimitri. So there's a lot of, you know, back and forth about the morality surrounding around that. Is she going to ever be able to go back to her old life? Is she going to, you know, actually be able to find Dimitri, first of all, and take care of him? And what exactly does that do in terms of what her future is? If she kills Dimitri, what is her next step? There's a lot of questioning going around this book that I think is very important. And I truly enjoyed watching this entire thing unfold because no point in it felt too slow. Now, that's not to say that there weren't slow points within this. There definitely was, especially in the buildup to finding Dimitri. And there's a lot that you see that deals with Rose finding his family and very much bonding with them and learning the intricacies of the Dampier community within this town that seemed to be very mysterious according to what Dimitri had basically been very briefly telling Rose or not really in depth, but enough to get her interested. And so there's a lot of things that kind of 
have to unfold that take a little bit more time and there are some very interesting things that also come up in the course of her being with Dimitri's family in terms of you know learning about more about herself and her capabilities and her uh, things that she's able to do and I don't want to say much more without spoiling it There will be things that'll go into the next review for the book five that are gonna kind of play into some things that come up in this one But for right now, I'm not gonna really go into that too much because it's not necessarily something that I want to share at this point Because you know for a lot of people that are watching this review It's more likely that you're gonna have either just read this or be in the process of reading this and want some information So I'm not gonna really tell too much about what goes on in this one yet but in general, I really liked this. I do think the pacing at times was a little kind of iffy, especially the first third of this was fairly slow because there was a lot of things that we had to really kind of delve into. And we don't actually see anything happen massively in terms of action until probably about halfway through the story, which is fine. I think that that worked. But I will say that because the book is over 500 pages, it definitely felt like it took me a lot longer to get through this. Because thinking in retrospect of the length of the rest of the books. Books one and two were about 350 pages at max. Book three was 400 pages, like over that limit. And so now this is so far the biggest book we have in the series at clocking it about 503 pages. So when you think of the amount of time that is spent within each of the places that Rose gets involved with and the things that she's doing, it definitely feels like things move much slower because there's a lot of time spent in certain places that are actually very important. And I'm not necessarily saying that basically there are certain things that shouldn't have been in. I think everything that was involved in this story is incredibly important, but it does feel slow from time to time because we spend so much time in very specific places because that's how the story is meant to kind of go. It's supposed to go in these areas and expand on so many different things while in these areas that it just feels like it takes a long time because in reality, it does. It takes a long time for some of these things to happen. So in all honesty, as far as the beginning of the second act of this entire story, I think this was a success. I think this really sets up a lot of very interesting things to explore with the last two books. In particular, something I can't really share without spoiling, but I will say it has something to do with Rose and Lissa's bond. There are so many things that pop up toward the end of this that I truthfully feel like I was on the edge of my seat. And this is honestly the first time I've read this book. Up to this point, I had only read the first three books. So this was a brand new first time reading through this one for me. And I was pleasantly surprised. Honestly, it exceeded a lot of the expectations I had. And like I said, for being the first book in the second act of this series, I think it was a massive success. And I'm so excited to see how the rest of the series ends up going. Because as juvenile as Rose can be in the first three books, I think this is a massive character shift for her in particular, because her entire temperament for one is changed drastically based on the things that have happened, like I said earlier. But on top of that, you start to see in this book, she grows so much more. The more information she learns and the more that she starts to really see things outside of her own perspective of how things have been happening, you really start to appreciate the fact that she's grown so much from the very stubborn, naive young woman we met at the very beginning of Vampire Academy. Like this is night and day difference between former Rose and now Rose. And I'm so excited to see that growth continue because it can only continue to get better. I don't see any reason why she would end up faltering by any means, but if she does, it's gonna be through her own stubbornness and, you know, negativity, which honestly that I would not be surprised by and I actually would be disappointed if that didn't get brought up in the other two books. I did give this a four to five stars because like I said, the pacing of it from time to time was a little bit iffy for me, but not too distracting to where I thought that it was super slow, that I felt like I was dragging through it. I think I just noticed more places where things probably could have been picked up a little bit as opposed to the timing and pacing of how it was 
originally. With that being said, thank you guys so much for joining me in this review of Blood Promise. If you guys have thoughts on this that you would like to share with me that can be as non-spoilerly as possible, please let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to have a discussion with you, especially on Rose's expansion of her character in this book, because I think this is the book where, honestly, we see the most growth from her, while, though, she had grown extensively over the last three books. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this video. If you guys did enjoy it, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you'd like to be and would like to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that button down below and subscribe to become an owl in our flock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye, guys!